Welcome back to your latest industry news. In today's proceedings, Virgin Atlantic has provided an update on its future fleet with some interesting developments there. Embraer is redefining what its E2 fleet will look like in the future, and Airbus sees an upcoming manufacturer as a threat. That's where I'd like to begin, with European plane maker Airbus describing the emergence of fellow plane maker Comac as something it needs to be watchful of. Over recent years, Comac, as you may know has aimed at launching what they say to be compelling aircraft types that would act as an alternative to Airbus and Boeing made planes in the market. Thus far, Comac has received primarily interest from state-owned Chinese operators who have, yes, bought the planes with bulk orders. But unfortunately, despite Comac's ambition, they've really been unable to successfully project its portfolio of aircraft outside of China to maybe the levels that they would have ideally liked. Despite these unsuccessful attempts, Airbus has remained watchful over this manufacturer's developments. This approach sees Airbus view Comac as a competitor today in 2024 rather than one, say, in five years' time. So Airbus is really treating them as one immediately and ensuring that Comac doesn't get ahead in specific markets. Such intense focus from Airbus comes because despite Comac's inability to stretch its legs outside of China, and, say, to other neighbouring locations, there is still significant levels of demand to send new aircraft to China, and Airbus is aware that as a result of this demand, there's ample opportunity for them to take market share away from competitors. But what that also means is for a company like Comac, they can take market share and prospective orders that would be incredibly valuable to the backlog for Airbus away from them. The longevity of Comac has been examined by analysts pretty close to the industry, These analysts believe that the product Comac is putting out doesn't differentiate itself from the competition nearly as much as it would need to to be a long-term success. Furthermore, these same people believe that other than orders from predominantly, you have to remember, state-owned Chinese companies, these planes being produced aren't favourable anywhere else in the world, and that's going to be a damning factor for consideration. As cited already by several executives at Airbus and even analysts, The lack of value gives the esteemed plane maker the upper hand at securing commitments for the long term, knowing that its own reliability will shine through. If we take a look at American plane maker Boeing's response to Comac, it's been to a similar extent. However, arguably their approach has had to factor in political tensions that have meant growing a presence in China over the last half a decade has been increasingly more challenging. Comac joins other manufacturers' views of attempting to break the ongoing duopoly held by Airbus and Boeing over this very commercial aviation sector. It's a valid concern other manufacturers have, and obviously an ambition they would like to turn into a reality. Brazilian plane maker Embraer has certainly been one of the more vocal ones seeking a solution and has definitely succeeded with its E2, but actually breaking this duopoly for good has proven a challenge no one's really been able to successfully undertake. Over to the next story, and moving to Virgin Atlantic, At the recently passed Farnborough Air Show, you may recall they ordered additional A330neos and what they called an order that was essential to complete their fleet transformation efforts. However, they also took the opportunity to delve deeper into the future of their fleet with updates surrounding deliveries and retirements. Several rumours have floated around in recent months involving Virgin Atlantic's plan regarding the 787 Dreamliner and whether this aircraft will be on the way out because of other movements to their fleet. Furthermore, onlookers have argued the positives of, say, consolidating to only Airbus widebody operations. Virgin Atlantic confirmed in a recent release that it has extended the lease of seven Dreamliners for the long term. Therefore, the 787 will continue flying across its network to markets in North America, the Caribbean, India, and potential new routes in the future too. However, interestingly, per the airline's fleet plan, in June 2024, commitments to the Dreamliner sit at 17 units, but the expectation is that by the first quarter of 2028, this will reduce to 14. 
As for the A330 Neo series, well, this will become the most important aircraft for the long-term future if we're measuring it by active units, cemented by that most recent top-up order for seven more. These newly announced A330 Neos will be delivered in 2027 onwards and sourced directly from Airbus. The total commitment will sit at 19 units once all deliveries are completed. The plane's already been deployed to key markets in the US, such as Boston, Miami, and New York. Virgin Atlantic expects three more units will be delivered this year alone, four more by the end of 2026 in what can be described as this initial batch of orders. By the first quarter of 2028 and following the removal of some 787 units, all 19 A330neos are expected to be delivered. Because of this commitment to the next generation type, Virgin Atlantic also announced it would begin saying goodbye to 10 currently active A330 300s from September of this year onwards. They will be, shock horror, directly replaced by the new engine option. As for the A350-1000, well, per their fleet plans between now and Q1 of 2028, they won't take delivery of any further jets. They will continue using this high-capacity variant for service across markets that require additional seats. This plane has proved highly reliable and a fantastic alternative in the airline's long-haul operations. You have to remember that across the last half a decade, we've seen the removal of multiple high-capacity jets in the Virgin Atlantic fleet, so it is the role of the A350-1000 in this sense to carry the flame. Over to the final story, and Embraer, while not necessarily announcing, say, new aircraft orders, they have still published some exciting developments at the Farnborough Air Show. The Brazilian plane maker unveiled the first automatic takeoff system, which will be implemented on the E195E2, also known for the project as the E2TS. This groundbreaking system will examine ways to enhance fuel use, which has been described as one of the more expensive parts of the flight, obviously, but especially during takeoff. Embraer says that the automated takeoff system will benefit airlines that operate the popular E2 as they want to optimize and streamline the process further. This process will enhance the takeoff system and produce a more precise and efficient moment with an improved flight trajectory. The plane maker says this will reduce the required field length and also pilot workload. And as a result, airlines will benefit with greater payload available and more range from challenging airports to a stand to benefit. Enhancing range from challenging airports and making departures therefore easier could be the significant improvement that so many airlines need to actually make that jump and commit to this plane for markets that may currently be out of reach with, say, aircraft in market. Embraer notes that the E2 already focuses on great performance at airports such as London City, but thanks to all these adjustments it's making, 350 nautical miles of range will be added from London City, which opens up new possibilities for operators. We will see other improvements, including cabin optimization with the addition of one row of seating, therefore four additional seats. Over 15 years, while four seats may seem like a very minor change, this will have the opportunity to see an airline grow $4.5 million in seat revenue. Furthermore, satellite connectivity will be added as part of a retrofit from 2026 on older planes, and data transfer solutions are coming, with greater weather radars and more to match the capabilities of next-gen planes. That is going to conclude today's pretty beefy update on our aviation news. If you have any thoughts, you know the best place to leave them is down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you tomorrow for another aviation recap. And we'll